everybody. Welcome to day three of NAM, or day one or day two for some of you. Uh, thanks for stopping by the booth. We've got some really exciting things to show you uh, today in, in Digital Performer. So many of you may not know that uh, Digital Performer has been around a very, very long time. The first version was out circa 1985, and I looked back on the internet, I found a little screenshot of this vintage version. This is circa 1990. This is running on pre-OS 9 operating system. Um, but even in this, you can see the primitive elements of some amazing complexity that is still relevant today, like the chunks feature, which is groundbreaking, for, especially in film scoring, for managing multiple pieces of music within a single file and how they work together. You can see advanced MIDI editing and other tools that survive even today. In fact, the control panel is kind of the same shape today even. So here is Digital Performer as it lives today in 2017. And now Digital Performer is a fully featured MIDI sequencer, audio recorder and editor, mastering platform. Basically, anything you could ever want to do with audio, Digital Performer can do it for you. And Motu, in the time between 1985 and 2017, Motu has been consistently innovating and adding interesting features um, that keep us on our toes and help us to make music in new and easier ways. So in the past year or two, we've had features like spectral waveform views added to DP, which let us see our, wave, our waveforms in all new ways and diagnose problems easily. We've had the MX4 synth added to the core of DP. It's a tremendously powerful analog style polyphonic synthesizer, and now it's part of the core of DP. We've had a whole host of new plugins added, including plugins like Multifuzz for guitarists, Simpty Easy for film scorers, a wonderful emulation of the classic 1176 and the Masterworks FET 76, guitar amp and room emulation plugins, and an amazing uh, modulating synthesizer called Megasynth. Along with that, last year we got Next Gen Pre-Gen, which really revolutionizes what we're able to do with virtual instruments. Now, what Next Gen Pre-Gen does is it takes the active audio, the active virtual instrument track in your sequence, devotes its full attention to that so that you can play it and tweak it in real time. Any instrument that is not currently recorded able is invisibly pre-rendered for you behind the scenes. The upshot of this is it consumes a fraction of its CPU power. So it in a, in a in a nutshell, it enables you to work with many more virtual instruments at once than you were able to before. And in speaking as a virtual instruments connoisseur, I'm so grateful for this because I'm using much, much larger sequences hosted in DP. Next, we had automation lanes added. You can see in my blue track here that I'm looking at my volume lane and my pan lane, and I could be looking at any other plugin parameters or mute or loop or anything like that simultaneously. So with this, we're able to see much more data at the same time and have more power to tweak it. MIDI Learn, another deceptively simple but powerful function. It means that everything in any plugin, either Motu or third party, can be automated just with a click or two, and it can be mapped to a knob or a slider or a fader on a control surface or a keyboard you have. And this makes the process of working with controls much more tactile. You can reach out and touch your music and you can interact with it in real time. And it really expands the possibilities of the kind of music making you're able to do in DP. Next, we have Music XML Export. Now, DP has a wonderful uh, score rendering engine called Quickscribe, which you can see on the left here. Um, uh, out of any MIDI recorded part, Quickscribe can do a very good job of intelligently rendering it so that it's readable in traditional music notation. However, when you need to take it a step up and you're preparing scores for, for uh, live performance by players or for print, you need to take a step up to a professional notation program like Finale or Sibelius or the brand new Dorico. And the Music XML export does exactly that. It takes the data on the left and it exports it perfectly to, uh, via Music XML to any of those programs. And you can see on the right that the author of this was able to add all kinds of expression and dynamics and phrasing and, and that kind of stuff, making it ready for, for publishing or performance. And we had search added to a number of windows in DP, including the Soundbites window, but maybe most importantly the Tracks window and the Tracks selector. So now you can manage large templates with much greater ease, and if, even if you have dozens or hundreds of tracks with a couple of keystrokes, you can get directly to um, the tracks or the elements that you're looking for. 
By the way, I'll be doing a presentation in the afternoon where I'll be showing this in much greater detail. So feel free to stop by at 2.15 if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff. So that is Digital Performer today in 2017. And it's my privilege now to show you a quick preview teaser of what's coming next for DP. So I'm gonna, in order to show this to you, I'm going to switch into DP and I'm gonna sh play a little segment out of a song that I'm working on right now. It's not even finished. But um, my red track here is a balance of my instrumental track. My blue track here is a, a scratch vocal that the vocalist laid down for me. So let's listen to a few seconds, and I'm going to start manipulating it in a few, in a few special ways. Stand alone in the sun. Break free from that chain. There's a mess in the Okay, so now that you've heard what I'm working on, I'm going to isolate this little phrase here, and let's take a look at it, look at it closer in the sequence editor. My blue track is my vocal track, and I'm going to switch, I'm going to solo it first by option clicking its play button. In DP parlance, option clicking something is the shortcut for I want only this, so mute everything else, or deactivate everything else. So now my, my track will be muted. And I'm going to switch it to the pitch layer. Now this, the pitch tracking feature has been in DP for quite a while. It automatically does analysis of any audio that you record into it, and it presents it to you on the grid so that you can see what notes are being played. So let me play this one phrase for you. There's a mess in the madness. Okay, so we've long had the ability to, let's say, grab a pitch and say, I'd like to move it to this pitch instead. There's a mess in the madness. DP does a wonderful job of um, retuning things. You can also fine tune um, elements of the pitch just by control, uh, I'm sorry, command dragging uh, pitch segments. And, and you can redraw using the pencil tool, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, one of my favorite tricks, um, let's say the singer has already left the building and I decided, man, I really wanted them to sing a harmony vocal with that, or now I have an idea for a harmony vocal. Well, let me show you a technique for using the pitch to do that. I'm going to option drag that sound bite to a new track. And let's switch both of them into pitch mode. And let me open it up a little bit so you can see, see the waveforms well. Um, let's say that I want to take this note and move it here, for example. Now, right off the bat, I have a problem. You may have noticed that both of my sound bites inherited that change. That's because both of those sound bites are still identical sound bites. So DP treats them as if and you're editing them together. And that's a very powerful feature. Let's say, for example, this was a sound bite that was the entire chorus of the song. And the chorus is going to appear multiple times throughout the song. And then later in the process, you discover, you know what, I need to tune a couple of those vocals. Well, you can tune it in one chorus, and those changes would propagate to the other choruses automatically. Now, in this case, I don't want to do that. I would like to basically divorce the two sound bites from each other. So first, what I'm going to do, just to, to make it clean, I'm going to go to the pitch automation menu and clear pitch. What this means is it resets everything to the way it was recorded. And now I'll switch back to the sound bites layer, and I'm going to click on my new sound bite, and I'm going to use the audio menu merge sound bites command. Now merge is traditionally used for when you have any number of sound bites selected. Maybe you have some fades or edits within them. And if you merge it, DP will simply write a brand new audio file to the disk containing all those edits. Well, in this case, I only have one sound bite, but merging does the same thing. It forces just a rewrite of that sound bite. You can tell if you look at the sound bite title, the original vocal was vocal hash dot two, and now it's vocal two hash dot four. So these are legally different entities right now. Now you'll find, if I switch into the pitch layer for both, it takes a second to analyze it, but now if I change the pitch for one, the other will not be affected. And now that I have that freedom, I can go to town and create some, you know, let's say an entirely different harmony. And let's play those two together so you can see what I've created. There's a mess in the madness. So this is kind of a really cool tool for creating harmonies uh, in, in virtual real time. 
Now you, you will hear it sound a little bit robotic. Obviously that's because this is the exact same take. So the same inflections, the same timing, everything is the same. If you if you really wanted to distinguish them more, you could you could get into the pitch a little bit more and customize something. But for our purposes today, uh, I think that that illustration suffices. So um, if you were to let me uh, let me go back to the blue one, and we'll you know, we'll mute the green one. Let's just concentrate on the blue one for a second. Um, you may have noticed if you've used this feature before that when I switched into pitch mode. I got a brand new menu that didn't exist before, and this is the core of the new features that, that we're showing in DP. We have a brand new world-class um, format correcting, pitch, and time stretching engine now built into the core of DP, and we were using it without even realizing we were using it. Now, formats, if you're not familiar with what formats are, formats are harmonic signatures that you, that you often find in acoustic instruments when they're playing sustained notes. They're very common in vocals, but you also find them in woodwinds, brass, strings, and other instruments that have sustained tones. Now, if you try and do a pitch shift without correcting the format, you will get the Mickey Mouse effect. So let me try that for you, and you'll instantly hear what I'm talking about. There's a mess in the madness. Now, obviously, unless you're going for a special effect, that's, that's not acceptable in a professional environment. However, if you do correct for the format, you'll find a much more realistic. There's a mess in the madness. That's much, much cleaner. So the new format correcting uh, pitch shift engine can do a lot of stuff. And this is just the beginning, by the way. But let me cover the other item items in this menu. You can use the new format corrected pitch shift. You can use standard pitch shift, which is basically like turning the tape faster or slower, or playing the LP faster or slower. You get the Mickey Mouse effect. You can use solo vocal pitch shift. Solo vocal pitch shift is the algorithm that has been in DP for a couple of decades now. It's still available as an option. And speaking frankly, uh, with many of these technologies, you, sometimes you don't know until you try it which algorithm will fit a particular piece of audio um, better than another. So it's there in case you ever need to, to use it. It's also there in case in previous versions of DP you've done any pure DSP pitch correction and it, it, they would inherit that. But now you have the option of choosing. And then finally there's no pitch shift, which is effectively bypass. And if I play this, I would just get the original pitch sound bite. There's a mess in the madness. So now we have all those options, and um, that brings a great degree of flexibility to how we can work with pitch and DP. So there's some new stuff I would like to show you too. Over here on the left, um, we were originally on the sound bites, in the sound bites lane, but when we switched over to pitch, you may or may not have noticed that a new menu appeared here too, absolute and relative. Now, by default, we're looking at things in absolute view. And just in case you've never noticed this before, look at how the shading ha occurs in the uh, in the sequence editor. You've got the three darker lanes together, and you've got two darker lanes together in a group. It's basically a piano keyboard, keyboard turned on its side. So if you're a pianist or a keyboardist, you'll instantly be able to tell that this note is a B flat without having to look over here at the key. So we tend to think, think of pitches traditionally when we're doing pitch correction in absolute mode. Where does it lie on the keyboard? But now we have the ability to look at it in relative mode as well. So if I zoom out a little bit, oops. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that my entire vocal track now sits at zero, which makes sense, except for that one note that I that I transposed. And that is tr transposed up a major third. So what can we do with this now? I'm going to use my scissors tool by holding down the C key, and I'm going to cut that pitch bar right on the downbeat of measure 14. Now that I've done that, let me pitch up the rest of it, let's say a major second. Let's see hear what that sounds like. There's a mess in the madness. So by doing that, um, I can pitch up an entire sound by or an entire track up by a set interval. And fine tuning is possible too. If you just hold down the command key, then you can slide it um, by microtones, basically. So that capability is um, is a very interesting one. Let's take it a step further and move to my track, which I'm now going to solo. That huge instrumental track. Let me play a second of it to get it back in your head, and then we'll start playing with this one too. Okay, so now when I switch this track into the pitch layer, 
I also get the absolute relative. But you see there's no pitch analysis happening because this is a very thick harmonic track and it has way too many pitches for DP to be able to determine what's inside it. So there's no pitch analysis in absolute mode like on a keyboard, but there is pitch analysis for relative mode. And of course, because I haven't done anything yet, everything is sitting at zero. So let's try making the same cut on the downbeat of 14 and transposing this up a major second. And I'll add my vocal back into the mix. And let's see what this sounds like. There's a mess in the night. So this becomes a very interesting and unexpected modulation that was seamlessly created 